Welcome back to the channel. We're here doing some uh, Rogue Trader. And I don't know that I want to do this Hulk. Hulks can be bad places, so we're going to skip it for now. Um, and, and 40k universe anyway, they can be kind of bad, so we're going to skip it. Um, probably should... And over here... It's gonna work travel the way it is. Hope for the best. Flash of flame red hair. Oh, what is this? <laughs> Who has flame red hair? We're going to the bridge though, so. This is on a really fast drive too. I don't know why it takes so long to load this last little bit. I say that I think every loading screen, so I do apologize, but Oh. Vets. Remember what it is. I can't pronounce. Alright. You're lit. You're lit. You posed a question to me not long ago at Lone Tech. Now I'm here to proceed with my answer. Remind me, you have my complete attention. Then listen closely to my answer at Lentech. You may struggle to comprehend what it, what it, what is to be said. Being accustomed to re rolling in your own might and skewing the world to your suit yourself. Pitch your understanding not towards my words, but the sense that lies hidden in the state of their sounds. You try and split the world into pieces, to fragment it to light and dark, truth and lies, self and other, but I see the world in a single whole. And it lies in simplicity and complexity. It is not enough simply to see the world and hear its voices. You must understand it. Think of the Leithen, the world on which our paths crossed. What is it truly? What, what is it says? That the Leithen's magnificence comes not from its green or its vast forests or from the depths of the waters. Its beauty is in the world, in the way it dances on the tongue. And even you, Alantak, can sense it. Try, say the words, slowly, delicately, casting aside all stray thoughts. Feel. Perhaps then you will see. The world around you fades and your perception is slightly narrows, coming to a single point of focus into your tongue only. Your tongue delicately tickles through your mouth and the sound slips along your throat with incredible silkiness, warming as it goes to the sip of fresh recap. Lay lay them. Tip of your tongue touches the same place again, and air softly rushes to your chest. The sound of the serration of leaves in the wind we through this forest canopy of thun. Your tongue taps the front teeth and a gentle vibration spreads through your body, sending a shiver along your spine. Guarded interest gleams in your light's eyes when your faces meet again. If your words are sincere and intact, then you are capable of seeing more than you do now. Instead of the lifeless clamors of monstrous mechanism, the roar of engines and the discordant voices of your followers, I hear and attend to silence. It rises in moments of spiritual serenity, and that stillness we become witness to the transformations of our inner world. Monkey lies past so swiftly. You rush through them for the sake of a chosen goal, but thoughts and transience and the lost frighten you. So you drive such thoughts away and drown yourself in daily tumult. But it is from fleeting moments which enter our lives and quickly vanish from them that the soul's fortress grows. A moment blooming, an hour's wilting, a splendor of each lies in its ephemerality. So to the memories of those who have left our side and no longer walk the path with us. And in you, Elantak, I see much more than just another monkey. Your true essence lies in your will, which is capable of changing the world around you and within you. It lies in your ability to create and understand your creation, and your ability to destroy. It lies in what your kin minds cannot grasp, what their primitive sight cannot behold. But I can see it. I am seeking the truth of one tech. However, I do I ask you not to make the mistake typical of your kind. My words contain no insinuation nor any call for your you to act. Your soul shines brightly in this world. I see you, and this will never change. That is all. And what do you make of it, Alantek? How differently do you see the world?
What does that mean? Find it especially around the imperfection and destruction. I see suffering those around me and it compels me to act. I see the uniqueness of the very creature. Everything in it pleases me. What was for? I can follow the line of thoughts. Every color, every form, color, creature, and being possesses its own charm and capacity to stir our emotions. Millions of stars in the darkness. The inimitability of weak crystals, the plethora of intelligent and primitive life forms that inhabit the galaxy. The world manifests itself in endless diversity, and in that lies its true magnificence. Now that we have each shared our souls about the world, I would like to know if your thoughts about me align with those of your kin. Do you see me differently? Accept your answer, Lentic. As long as you don't attempt to get under my skin or demand something else of me. I will go now, Lentic. Guide your still winged bird. Okay. That's what I was hoping to do all along. But, you know, for some reason I couldn't because people keep interrupting me. <laughs> uh, anyway, no. It's, it's part of the story and it's fun. Alright, so... Which, which of these do we need to go for this? and look around because that's what we're going to do we're going to look around uh, so that's plasteel do I really want plasteel it's seven that's pretty good though Explored. Captain, we received transmission from Faustin. It was sent by members of Order Hammer. Voltaire is a Saint Cognitus, whose monastery is the only settlement on the planet. Or rather, it used to be. Some time ago, a transport vessel, the Navica, unloaded several thousand refugees from a planet belonging to a rogue trader winter scale. The Order of the Hammer has judged the invasion to be an act of aggression and is asking for worship protection. Which one do I want to do here? Alright, as you please your lordship. Six quarters and seven days after the Feast of Passing, uh, Nicodemus, uh, blah blah blah. I think these are going to be... This is just some kind of thing, I'm not going to read all that, it's way too much to read.
Alright. Humbly the order of the hammer he did the dog for his comp competent, and then sealed the airlocks, and opened the gates to the abode, and brought forth gifts of virtue to relieve the suffering of the ill-stricken. After her prayer, the architect set to work, in accordance with the saint's teaching and the parameters set forth in the standard temple construct. They erected spacious living quarters and sturdy fort walls for, for the parliamentary militia, and a spacious auditorium wherein to trade and sort goods, and a proud sensorium within those walls, clerks, and several bondsmen. And yet, in a new yet righteous way of life came to Faustine, and people rejoiced, and all was good. I mean, I have a feeling that all wasn't really good, but you know, that's okay. Because, you know. Holy gifts, times 20. Two Christians and efficiency. High throne. What do we want here? Plus 30 to shield sector is pretty good to be honest with you. And I don't really have a flamer. So it's a cool looking weapon. I mean it's got it's got some pretty good damage from the looks of things. And even if that, you get the plus 1,000 Drusians, you get efficiency. I think I'll go with the shield. I guess where I want to do this. All right. to head back. Alright, so now we move on to another sector. And the question is, do we explore these sectors here? For serving you, Lord Captain, I just thought you should know. Lady navigated her had successfully guided ship out of the warp's hold into the Sanctum's Nevis. But instead of going to her chambers as usual, she headed for yours. Perhaps she won't, you will be you will want to be you want to prepare for this meeting. Uh, can I just look? I just want to look at the map for a second. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Look at the map. Uh. That's all I want to do.
Greetings, Lord Kevin. I meant to inform you that our journey through the warp went well. My navigator's gaze perceived the light of the Astronomicon beyond the tumultuous waves of the Sol Sea of Souls, albeit with some difficulty. The crew and the Master Helmsman conducted themselves adequately. My instructions during the jump helped them find their focus and guide the ship without any serious incidents. <laughs> pleases me to hear this, because I am equally satisfied with your manner of command. I see you have many compelling works of art here, but precious few paintings. I, for one, do enjoy passing what little spare time I have with the brush in hand. Why, just recently I created a beautiful boy's cave inspired by our travels together. I cannot show it to you quite yet, as it is still only existed in my mind's eye, but the imagery, oh, if only you could see it. <laughs> Do you truly wish that it would? But I must admit, I have never painted for anyone other than myself before. You have to forgive me, Lord Captain, but I do not think that this is, uh, it is such a good idea. These chambers are in need of masterpieces, while I merely paint for my own pleasure. <laughs> her smile speaks. Her fear to smile speaks louder than her flat refusal. One other thing I meant to tell you is that I am quite well read, and that my knowledge is not limited to the Navigator's Crest. I am versed in many other scholarly fields, such as the Centenary History of Calixus Sector or Cassius Rex Ward. Navigators have taught to familiarize themselves with the warp from childhood. Should you require my help, that is to say, my counsel, my knowledge is extensive, so please don't hesitate to ask. You've been blessed with me talents. Bird trader making suggestions, limitation, intimidations toward the lady navigator says you no credit. I would ask you to refrain from such frivolities in the future. This can only permit you to leave your presence. Well. Oh well. Messed that one up, didn't I? Oh well. To the bridge. Alright, let's visit this. Uh, loading. Too many loading screens, man. Too many loading screens. Alright. So space dust. Space dust is a pretty good thing, so you just get stuff. And by stuff I mean fuel. Alright, let's scan it. Oh, uh, something here. And explored it. The ruins of an ancient imperial city were discovered on a dead world completely proud of ecosystems. According to reports, the entire settlement is contained in a titanic glass dome once that once held an artificial atmosphere. Your augurs detected a framework with three other similar structures that were never completed. For whatever reason, the dome systems failed and left behind the city a ghost that never managed to become a proper colony for the Imperium. Where is Gus? I'm gonna do one of these two. Objects discovered. Ooh. 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 Cargo is restoring loot that is not valuable enough. Holy gifts. Okay. Less vulture casing. Holy guess and holy guess. This is gold here. Why is this gold? Oh! Ranged weaponry. Uniform kit. Provisions. That's just stuff. And we're going to 
Lavishly decorated the state of the local ruler towers over the rows of featureless bunkhouses. Several explorers perished from the cleverly hidden tripwires in the courtyard, but after losing their companions, the team easily disarmed the remaining traps in the estate. Anything of value has been promptly delivered to the rogue trader's vessel, where Captain has been given an exquisite sword found in the secret cache that once belonged. The mansion zone. Okay. Let's uh, I want to see what we got here. So this sword here. Hmm. I mean, you can't use it. It does a little more damage than what he's got. But I think that sun that thunder slam is really nice. And then, what's that blessed? Single attacks with both weapons automatically, automatically hit the target. Yeah, that doesn't sound terrible. Where does it go? Right there. I'll put that on there because I think that's I think automatically hitting a single shot is better than having a little bit of toughness. Okay, so we've already explored that. Explore this. Plus steel. I don't, I don't really want to do two plus steel. To be honest, it was like I've got quite a bit of plus steel coming in, so I don't really want to do any more right now. I need other things. All right, what is this? Magnetic storm. Magnetic storm raging below the planet blurs to the gaze of auger rays. Only a truly powerful donor machines may seize the currents of the magnetic fluctuations in the blessed vigil and discover the mysteries of the Emperor Second Planet. Oh, may you return one day. So I, I'm assuming I, that I need something before I can do that. Which is kind of interesting. You actually know that, you, that there's stuff you have to come back for later. Alright, so let's move on. Alright, we're gonna travel here. We're roughly just gonna we're gonna explode blood temperature, thermal control, several Kubernetes have suffered from burns and frostbite. Hey priests are performing rites of the machine spirit, the last few days, complaints about question thermal control, say priests, blah blah blah. Yeah, whatever. Not that terribly interesting to be honest with you. Okay. Room go. Room go! Is something I really need to do? I don't know. Alright. What we got here? Oh, we got some ships over here. We're gonna we're gonna go before the ships first. We're gonna do the ships. But just not right yet. Alright, scan it. Alright. Xenotech and Augur's anomaly. Yeah, we can we can definitely use that. All right, so now we have that Xenotech, and we can go up here and we can do this contract now. We need a contract for that. Plus three profit factor. So I mean, it's pretty awesome. We just need we need Prometheum now for that one. Augur's Anomaly. Let's save. And then we're going to hit this Augur's Anomaly. Oh. Okay. Did not expect to have to... Exit the ship. But that's okay. Bottomless Pit does not sound... Too awesome. Can be rectified. Alright, 
some stuff. That's the darkness and the darkness will accept you. That's the darkness right there. Uh, let's step back right now. I don't, don't want to do that yet. Let me explore a little more first. Saying we go into the pit, but I don't know what happens. We're gonna try it though, because this is what we do. Examine the pit. Now pierce the darkness lying above this lotus. But if through sheer force, you will fulfill your diverge. All right, lean over and stretch your hand in the darkness. At, at the edge of your consciousness, you sense something slimy and tangible answering your invitation for contact. Seizing your thoughts, tasting your emotions, surprising curiosity helps in of you. But these feelings are not your own. I mean, what do we do here? Okay, you were hit by a sudden wave of all consuming silence. Moments later, the word around you disappears, leaving only black. Absolute sense of overwhelming, and you slowly sink into the void, sucking you in. You're looking at a tiny person. You're looking at a tiny person, peering over the edge of the bottomless darkness. You're, you're looking at yourself, then you blink and see the same place, except the camp around you is full of life. Scholars are zipping back and forth between field structures, switching with, on unfamiliar machines in an attempt to know the unknown. A moment later, they're all nude, singing and dancing around the pit. The smell of heated bodies, blood, and sweat assaults your nostrils, drawing out your thoughts. One by one, the lunatics fall into their brace of nothingness. As you, you make out a total like Dinos building a temple around the pit. They are praying, conducting rites, and making sacrifices of the darkness in hopes of unimaginable gifts. Then darkness shrouds everything once more. Rather, you are the darkness, something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the furthest stars or swallowing a galaxy. But some will, will pulls you out of the cozy embrace of your void toward the light, and you snap out of the vision and sorrow fills you with men. You find yourself on the floor of an abandoned estate. You feel someone disgusting presence behind you, and raspy foul breath tickles your nostrils. A drop of water trickles down from the stone ceiling and shatters the silence with a deafening splash. The heavy door freezes open, and you try to escape now or never. Alright, turn around and fight the creature. Because, you know, we'll probably turn around and intend to killing the thing with your right hands, and then exclaim with hesitation. You recognize the figured monster is staring at you from your nostrils. Let a heavy sigh and kind of hot, epic Bedded vapors and smooth surface of the mirror. You sit in apex of, massive, of a massive onyx pyramid. Your abilities are limitless. With a single thought, you can raise mountains, drain an ocean, and disperse the clouds. But nobody cares anymore. Soon, your brothers and sisters will sacrifice you so that they can share their power among themselves and guide the civilization to prosperity. Okay. So this is a seventy-four. Tell me you were placed in a cold black slab covered in. By the end of the ceremony, you close your eyes and pray as a brother and sister rip your seven hearts out of your chest. By the end of the ceremony, you're gnawing on your every last bone of your body, shedding tears of sorrow. You join your ancestors from the black monolith, and many centuries there, you watch from above as your civilization blossoms. 
You were lying, burning sand, and struggling to open your eyes, but your eyelids feel too heavy. You can barely move your arms and legs. Your stomach hurts. Your throat is bone dry. Several of your kin are emancipated or scattered about. The hunger is so strong that it's driving you mad. You let a bestial howl. Something metallic clinks next to your right hand. A knife. This is it. You must survive. You must survive. All you need to do is decide whom to sacrifice. You bite down on your belt and cut off a piece of your own flesh. The pain is so terrible that your vision darkens. Unable to bear it, you let out a frenzy groan, but you still show the slimy scrap in your mouth and swallow it. You can sense the darkness triumphs. It has been following your thoughts with great interest, rummaging in your memory, studying your emotions, savoring your resolve and rage. Spineless gut rumbles with satisfaction. Last grateful, lets you go and present a parting reward. What was the reward? What was the reward? Fate and fortune favor the bold. Champion the best. Plus two. Oh, weapon skill. Eh. Let's force fellowship. Okay, unfortunately, that's not the skill I would want on him, but. You know, whatever. It's a skill. Alright. Let's head back. Alright, let's go here. Needed here, is it? No, it's Promethean. I'm gonna leave that for now. There's only two as well. I think it's interesting that the ships just kind of wait there for you. You know, ruins. Okay. Is that it? Is that what we get there? Alright. Let's save it, and then we're gonna go buy these ships. I'm um, I'm not good at the ship combat. Report shows up in your personal cargo carrier. See, unknown ships are towing this interstellar sexton. The cargo ship belonging to one of Foot Falls' wealthiest traders. Looks like the pirates have bitten off more than they can chew, and have now been forced to drag a ship to a more secluded place where they can plunder it undisturbed. So this is you, the escort ships charge into battle at once, while the captive sextant powers up its warp engines. Unless you interrupt the, prep in the preparation for the jump, the cargo ship will forever vanish beyond the veil of the immaterium, along with all the riches it's carrying. We're actually going to raid this ship. I mean, I, I guess I have to. This is my only option. <laughs> my only option there was to raid the ship. It wasn't my intent. I was intending to rescue it. But... I'm thinking I did I not click detect the pirates. Pretty sure I did. All hands prepare for battle stations. Oh well, there's okay. Sort them out. With the force of a supernova. Let them taste our fury.
Make every shot count. Huh. Unfortunately, didn't destroy it. Prepare for acceleration. I don't know what this does. Didn't do anything, apparently. Okay, I read one of them. Helmsman, take us in. Let them taste our fury. Fire at will. Torpedoes away! Salvo! Make every shot count! Lance batteries! Volley! Okay, so he surrendered. Oh, then he just went, like, nuts. Because, you know, why would he not go nuts? Trying to get away. 
it's fine, you know, he will get away, cause it's, you know, it's okay. Let them chase our fury. Set. I'm just trying to get away, and it's fine. I'm okay with them getting away, to be honest with you. Oh wow, that was some good damage. That was some good damage right there. By good damage, I mean awful damage. Engage the engines. Helmsman, take us in. Keep up the pressure! so hard man and it goes through the shields because sh the shields are still up that's what's weird is the shields are still there and it's going through the shields alright let's do this one more time Torpedoes away. Make every shot count. Well, I was hoping to destroy that. Lance batteries. Volley. That's some big damage there from those right there.
that one's running. Prepare for acceleration. Macro cannons, open fire. With the force of a supernova. Engage the engines. Make every shot count. Salvo! Keep up the pressure. Helmsman, take us in. I was leaving too now. Okay. So much damage, man. Decks are reporting hull breaches. Executing damage control. Actually, catch it, I don't think. Let's knock it out of its. <laughs> do that. That's all I can do right here. Another enemy 
sundered by the void. All right, we're gonna reload this one. I don't like the. I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna catch, we're gonna catch that thing. It's not what I wanted to do, but this, this is how we're gonna play it out. Shouldn't take this long to load either. All right. Make every shot count. Macro cannons, open fire. Torpedoes away. Better shields than that. Question is, oh, we can't hit it anyway, so it doesn't matter. We're gonna do that because. Every shot counts. With the force of a supernova. Start the shields real quick. All hands prepare for acceleration. damage. Let the void sort them out. Engage the engines. Macro cannons, open fire. Coordinate set. Lance batteries, volley! Glad we missed with that one shot. That's awesome. Maybe not. Well, this 
let's actually hit. Engage the engines. Just short of being able to hit this with that. He's not running. Pretty to run. He didn't though. What did he how did he Taste our fury. Fire at will. Torpedoes away. Come on. Oh, that one's leaving too now. Yeah. Prepare for acceleration. So close. Keep up the pressure. Lance battery. Volley. Can't gain on them then. Fire at will. It took a lot of damage on this. Hopefully that's worth it. Hopefully that's worth it. I don't know, we'll see. The void may be harsh, but we're harsher. Meso micro cameras, cannons. All 
Like we do a lot more damage than I feel like we do a lot more damage than they do, but yet we don't. Never been able to actually do a ramming attack. We are going to upgrade the hole though. All right, and that's everything in this. That's everything in this area here. So. But anyway, so we're going to end it here. That was. I, I don't know. I don't really. I, I don't really like the space combat too well, but we're gonna end it here, and we'll continue it next time, and head on into the uh, to the next areas. Uh, appreciate you joining us. We'll see you then. <laughs>